This week of Fate to Obsidian, Fabled Spirits got us drunk, so we talked spoilers of Lightbringer. Oh, and there's coarse language. Welcome everybody to a very special episode of Fade to Obsidian. I am Skipper, joined as always by Crescent. And this week we are joined by Twist, or Taryn, however you want to go, from <laughs> Fabled Spirits. Welcome. Hey Thank you. Welcome. Thank you for having me on. Uh, so, for causing us to spend yeah, so much. at least $100 each. Mine was like two fifty, well, but sure. <laughs> it's not my fault. Your bars were not stocked properly. I mean, uh, yeah, you're not wrong. <laughs> uh, so, who are you, Twist? Why? Why is your name Twist? And who is Fabled Spirits? What is happening here? Yes, good questions. All are good questions. So, in the net, in the den, I'm known as Twist. Um, you granted me this name because I'm a cocktail maker i'm a bartender i make the cocktails and um also because i write books so for the cocktail twisting and the plot twisting Love but my it. husband thought it's because i twisted my ankles so often <laughs> i don't think it we knew that details. Yeah. yeah 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 it's fitting in a lot of ways i like it i think crescent gave you your name yeah, is that, that correct yeah. yeah i would love to be a fly on the wall when you're creating names when you're like I don't know. Yeah. It it's fun. it's fun, some of the brainstorming. I don't usually brainstorm, get, like, but the rest of them are debates. so good. Yeah. Do you ever get, like, heated debates on No. On it's names? Pretty, pretty tame. Yeah. A lot, of the t a lot of the time we get, like, one or two suggestions or, like, we'll go back and forth. Um, okay. A lot of the time somebody will toss out a name and then I, it knocks loose a synonym out of my brain. I'm okay. Like, oh, how about this? And then it'll end up one of those two. Or like drill bit. Drill bit will will come in just like just nail it right off the bat. Yeah. That's so cool. Yeah. Um, so yeah, but anyways, I'm also part of a part of Fabled Spirits. It's Danny and I. Um she is not in the den yet, but I am, so I'm thank you guys for letting me come on and do this and um we love making cocktails for books, Danny and I. That's kind of what we do. And so uh, we've made some Red Rising cocktails. Mm. And we both recently did cocktails for Iron Gold. Nice. Yeah, we were lucky enough to have you make one for our Glittering Gala. Yeah. And, oh, yeah. oh, my God. Yeah. yeah, the Ragnar. And it, had, and it had sparkles in it. It yep. did, yes. Edible glitter. That was, was, a, yeah. that was a fun one. I actually did that one at my bar, too, for a while, and a lot of people liked it. Nice. I like it. Did you call it the Ragnar at the bar, too? I called it, um, oh, shoot. What did I call it? I didn't call it the Valkyrie. I called it after the Norse heaven. What is that? Valhalla. 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 I called it Valhalla. Nice. nice. That makes sense. I like that. It seemed yeah. more approachable than Ragnar. Yeah. Yeah, no, I feel like you'd get a lot of questions. The, uh, <laughs> right. And people well, with, have with the popularity of, of the, the Vikings series, I think a lot of people would have been like, oh, yeah. Yeah. Ragnar yeah. Lothbrok. Yeah. Yeah. That's true. Oh, um, yeah. I will say, though, that holy shit, uh, it was strong. <laughs> I, had a, I had a double at the gala, and I was fair buzzed no. after it. I don't know how to make a weak drink. That's like my downfall. We've noticed. <laughs> this yep. one only has like four different types of liquor in it. Yeah. Yeah. And only two of them are well over 40%. Well, it yeah. depends on what are you talking about? It depends on what you're using. Well, he you doesn't use, use scotch that's. It's being 46. <laughs> yeah. He doesn't Mine's... use the easy scotches. <laughs> Why would he? No. Then you'd have to buy something new, right? Yeah. Ah, oh, darn. You know me. Oh, darn. I hate my it's own new whiskey. 
Awesome. All right. Well, what are we making today? What are we doing? Uh, yeah. So today we're making Lysander's drink, <laughs> um, which definitely brought some controversy on our Instagram page. Ooh. But, uh, just in fact that, like, you know, no one really likes Lysander in, in this fandom. Um, and I suggested calling it Bitch Sander, but I was overruled by Danny because, you know, Instagram and their rules. Yeah. Fair. You could have gone Cry Sander. I would have enjoyed that. Yeah. Also. Could have gone Cry Sander. Could have gone Cry Sander. Also, it's like you don't want to give anything away too much if people are just entering yeah, yeah, the fandom or if they know of Red Rising but haven't finished the, you know, haven't gotten into the second trilogy. And so yeah. you don't want to like... <laughs> That's, I always feel like in comms, I'm like, guys, stop talking about Lysander or else people are wondering why we're like making fun of a nine-year-old. <laughs> we're all like, I hate this nine-year-old. <laughs> yeah. I mean, like, have yep. you met several uh, nine-year-olds? Oh, poor nine-year-olds. <laughs> They're just finding their way in the world. <laughs> We're just trying to get through it. Uh, all right. So, well, what's inspired? What What are we working with today? Yeah. Okay. So whenever I'm creating a cocktail for somebody um, or for a character, I always kind of base it on three things. So one is color. Color is a huge thing for me which makes Red Rising incredible to make cocktails for because everyone is in their own color hierarchy um, or in their own color cast, I should say. But um, in other books, sometimes it's like the color of their hair or eyes or a color that they resonate with or they talk about a lot, like pretty often. Um, and then a second thing is gonna be if there's any sense, like if someone's like, oh, this male smelled like pine trees, you know, then I'm probably gonna pick an earthy gin, you know, kind of a thing. Yeah. Um, and so if there's any like flavors or even favorite foods that people have, that's another big one. If that sticks out to me, then I'll try and play off that. Um, and then the third and final one is just, you know, personality characteristics. Are they strong? Are they kind of weak? Are they um, smart and, you know, courageous? Like that kind of plays into what I think spirit represents them. Um, so for this cocktail, one thing that really ties all Red Rising cocktails together is the use of scotch. I think scotch is a very gold color thing to drink. Yeah. Okay. Uh, we not only see it in Lorne and with Darrow and with a couple other um, golds, but it just the color itself, um, what it represents and that it is strong and it is not for everybody. And it's, you know, just a little bit earthy. And so that's why I think it's really fitting for gold. Um, but then another thing I really wanted to play around with for this cocktail was sherry. I feel mm -hmm. like sherry is not a well-known or used um, spirit within cocktails. And for some reason, it just saying Lysander to me. Like, it just saying pretentiousness. <laughs> <laughs> I love and it. So I wanted um, to bring the two together in this way. I also know that sherry goes really well with scotch because a lot of scotch is actually aged in sherry cask. Nice. I like it. So that's how this cocktail started. And then I just kind of played around with a few things to tie them together. Awesome. I love it. Yeah. Okay. Well, we've got, this just, is like, yeah. You just made me think of something. I'm going to switch out what scotch I'm using. Oh, the plot thickens. Because he's probably got one that's made in a sherry bottle. That's what he's going with here. <laughs> it might end up being too much sherry, though, Crescent. No, no. It's our bag of doll. There's no such thing as too much sherry. There's no such thing. <laughs> oh, All right. Goodness. I don't know whether or not my scotch was made in a sherry bottle. <laughs> I assume Which not. one are you using? I am going to use... Oh, God. The... Yeah, make me pronounce it. That'll be great. Kale Isla? Oh, Kalila. Kalila. Sure, that. It's one of my the favorites. 12, I actually don't yeah. have that one. It's one of the first I scotches I ever had. had oh, really? It's one of the first scotches I ever had because V.E. Schwab talks highly about it, and that's who mm. I was emulating at the time. So, Ooh. yeah, there you go. I didn't know she was a scotch drinker. She is, yes. 
Yeah. But yeah. Uh, I will say at this point that if you are listening to this on like Spotify, you should probably just jump onto YouTube because we are about to make the cocktail live and it might get very interesting for listening. Yes. But all right. I'm I'm not the best at giving directions, but I will try. I will try my best. It's all good. We'll see how this goes. It's going to go great. All right. So first things first, jigger. I don't have a jigger. Can I not pour from the heart? <laughs> Can I get a shot glass? Would a shot glass work? <laughs> you could do a shot glass, theoretically. Okay, hold on. I, I didn't did think this through. I don't own a jigger. <laughs> hold on. Do you, do you not, how do you measure things? In a shot glass. Do you want... Hold on. I don't usually do, do fancy oh. cocktails. <laughs> We're right, lu- we to, are I lucky that I picture. had this. We are I'm lucky just, that I had own this. We welcome all new people here. Okay, hold on. All right. Hi, have shot, shot, have I have, have a shot glass. glass. No. Okay, so we're just gonna we're gonna we're go gonna go free ball this. Yeah. Free, oh man! Oh man! I'm so excited. <laughs> <laughs> I was it's asking great. Crescent. I was like, I realized when I sent you over the. Mm the i don't know ingredients that i didn't put them in milliliters for my canadian friends i we very rarely actually use milliliters i would say really uh, okay in making drinks you are correct but otherwise yeah, in make, you yes in correct drinks. in like cooking and making <laughs> drinks we just go with ounces yeah. okay yeah all right we so we're ready this. now yes. that we have our thing yes okay so we're starting with the sherry so the sherry I'm using is, I'm going to butcher this, Amontillado. It starts with an A. Yeah, yes, I thank think you. We, I think we have very similar. Um, so it's we a dry. We have the exact same one. It's a dry <laughs> sherry. So we're going to do one and a half ounces of this. Okay. So Crescent, or I'm sorry, Skipper, one, one and a half shots. One and a half shots. Okay, and it's going into here. Yeah. I'm gonna move. It smells good. Mm-hmm. Okay. It smells like my grandma's house. Let's be serious. I like how you think, Crescent. <laughs> I almost needed like a drink on I don't the think side I've ever here. Had it. Yeah, I don't think okay. I've ever had it on its own. So now we're moving on to scotch. Okay. Uh, so one ounce of scotch. It's peated scotch you want to use for the recipe. I'm using Laphroaig 10. For the one online, I actually use that this Askag higher proof one, um, 110 proof. Um, so you can choose your own proof, choose your own peated scotch as long as it's peated. Yeah. I've got Ardbeg Boogdal, which is my number one favorite scotch of all time. And what's the proof on that? Uh... 108. Nice. All right, one ounce? One ounce. One, one, shot, one shot glass. glass. <laughs> oh my God, we're going to get so many bottle licks at a crescent. I'm just looking at how many of mine are dripping here. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Fresh lemon juice. We won't look at mine. Yep. We won't look at yours. Three quarters ounce. So that could be approximately half a minute. Oh, God. Oh, this is going to be such a mess. Are you trying to do the lemon directly right now? Yeah, he is. <laughs> we should have set you up with the second camera, not me. <laughs> While Crescent's doing that. Next, we have triple sec, or any orange liqueur will do. Even if you have blue curacao, you could use that. That's an orange liqueur, but it would mess up the color. Mm. So half an ounce of orange liqueur or triple sec. Mm, That's a little bit more than half. Hold on. Just a little sippy sip. Yeah, there we go. I'm very glad that I uh, thought to put a a tray down underneath all this. 
cocktailing gets messy. All the bartenders I worked with, um, they always called me the messy bartender. And they're not wrong. Are you still squeezing that lemon? <laughs> yes, it did not go as well as I hoped that it would. <laughs> Good lord. <laughs> you know what? I don't you know get what can... you get and you don't get upset. Mm -hmm. Okay, so three quarters of an ounce of lemon juice. Okay. Fresh squeezed lemon juice. Thank Look you. Look at you go. Yes. Uh, Mine is also definitely fre fresh squeezed. Half an ounce. Disappoint right? me once again. You know, I shouldn't have expected anything other than fake lemon juice. Uh, yeah. Did you see my Swedish chef impression? <laughs> oh, yes. Oh, yes. <laughs> I watched it over and over and over again. Each time, uh, my heart died a little bit. Yeah. Which does okay, remind so me while I'm shaking this that it probably will leak. Because <laughs> it does. It's all part of the experience, really. Yeah, totally. Okay, did you have the triple sec present? I did, yep. Okay, so half an ounce of Drambuie. Okay. Have you guys had Drambuie before? I have. I've had it on its own. Oh, see, it's like Christmas Eve, one of our like after dinner liqueurs. You can have Kahlua, yes. Drambuie. Yeah. So. It is definitely my winter drink. Again, a little bit more than. Even though it's summertime. Mm, that's yeah. good. And then just a smidgen of simple syrup, like a quarter ounce or less. Okay. The triple sec and um, the drambuie will make it sweet, but this will just round it out a little bit more. Yeah, just put your sugar right in there. Just <laughs> somebody was unprepared. And I even asked Crescent to make me simple syrup. And I was I at did. a You never come picked it up. <laughs> I was Come at a on. distillery yesterday and I was like, do I buy simple syrup? And my friend was like, no, that's dumb. Don't do that. Turns out, should have just bought it. So way back in the day, I did buy the simple syrup or my husband did. One of us did. Um, but now I just reuse the bottle. So I still make my own simple syrup. I just Put reuse the bottle. the bottle. But you can buy it. But it's yeah. like $6 for literally just sugar water. That's well, that was my friend was like, this is stupid. Do not buy the simple syrup. And I was like, okay. And then should have. Should have bought it. All right. I'm okay. just stirring my. And now it's bitter time. So this is my, um, my old fashioned blend of bitters. It's just half orange and half Angostura. Your typical orange bitters or your typical or old fashioned bitters. So I like extra bitters. So I did like eight, eight dashes. Oh, okay. But. I recommend probably about four for people who are just eh, about bitters. Okay, cool. Now, before we move on to stirring it, I almost forgot the most important part. The absinthe! Yeah! I'm excited. So get your glass. Okay. Get your absinthe. I have a spritzer, so I just spray mine. Okay. About four times. If you are rinsing, what you got to do is put just this, the smidgiest smidge in your glass. Okay. Twirl it, twirl it around in the glass. Coat the sides, yeah. And then all the excess, you drink it. <laughs> I don't know if it, yeah. I had never had absinthe until this week when I purchased this, really? and then they made me den dunk with it. <laughs> oh, I miss you den dunked with absinthe? Yeah, because uh, Cross and PJ from Words and Whiskey did it, and then I peer pressured into doing it. How was it? It wasn't terrible, but I will say I didn't actually use Oreos. I used, like, Mint Thin Girl Guide cookies, so it was, like, a like chocolate coated with mint. It was pretty good. It was pretty That's good. Cheap. Yeah. It's I didn't fine. have I didn't, I didn't have Oreos at the time. But yeah, there you okay. go. Ice into your your concoction. And so you guys can definitely use shakers. Mm. 
My ice is stuck in my hydro flask. There it is. Good. Preston, are you using a shaker or a crystal mixer? Shaker. Shaker, cool. Okay, shake and stir, babies. It's gonna explode. I can see it now. Preston, love the technique. I've been watching a lot of how to drink. It's gonna explode. It exploded when I did the Swedish chef one. Oh, it's going. It's going. You, yeah, you probably had something that foamed, didn't you? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what I had into that one. Okay, do I have to do anything else before I strain it? No, you strain it. Okay. What about the orange bitters? Didn't that not go in? Did you miss the bitters? I, I did the I other did. bitters. I didn't do any orange. Bitters. It's a, sorry, both my bitters are mixed together. Uh, so okay, hold on. <laughs> Mine's gonna be very bitter heavy though. Okay, hold on. Let's just I to do this for the Oh god, we're spilling. Ooh, that made a lot. And mine is way too full. Mine is also, I, I had to stop pouring. <laughs> I like it. Okay, now I'm just dripping everywhere. Yours turned out perfect. Mine looks a little orange, but maybe it's just the lighting. Mine's in a green glass, so I don't know what to tell you. Okay. okay. So this... Is Ooh. The Ooh. I love this. This is great. Yeah. Very good. You like it? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Yeah. That's really good. How does the sherry scotch pair with the sherry? Sherry well. Sherry oh. well. <laughs> That's cringy. Welcome not, to the podcast. I'm not a yeah. huge pun person. Mm. Me neither, and I'm stuck with him. You're not a pun person either? I'm not a pun person. I was debating with Ransom about this, because she's like the pun queen. Yeah. And I just can't, I don't know why, I just can't do puns. I said they're like the lowest form of humor. Mm. Yep. Yes, I should. The hot take. So does it taste like Lysander? I don't hate this. I was going to say, this tastes better than Lysander deserves. <laughs> I, commented, I commented, somebody was like, this doesn't seem like it's going to taste good if it's supposed to be Lysander. And I'm like, it's the best thing that's ever come out of him. <laughs> so. It's, yep. No, it's very good. Well, plus the whole, you know, second series. If it wasn't for Lysander, there wouldn't be a second Red Rising series. Yes. We True. do need we yeah. do need our protagonist or antagonist there. We'll give we'll give him that. If we okay. must. If we must. Well, thank you for that. I love this. Yes, of course. This mm -hmm. is and now that I have all the ingredients, I'm just going to continue making them. It's a lot like, easier than I thought. I can make and I have yep. all the ingredients. Yep, that's how I roll. It's that so, or rum and cokes. You're just going to be um, constantly thinking about Lysander. Oh, w wish that wasn't oh. what it was. Now I will. Uh, I'm going to share. I'm going to share the sherry that Twist chose for me. Oh, I couldn't find Amontillado. There was like three different sherries. Mm. So she told me to get dry sack. Because it seemed the most fitting. I like it. He sent me a bunch of options. And I looked at the different types. And I was like, well, first of all, this one will be the better type. But second of all, the name just is fitting. Nice. Yep. Oh, dry sack sherry for Lysander. I think I got lucky that the liquor store I went to is... Um, I was running another errand and was ahead of time. And so just popped into that one. And it's in a very rich part like part of town that when I was like walked up and I was like I need sherry for and she's like what kind and I was like ah oh, and just like showed her the ingredient list and she's like 
oh, it's for a cocktail. And so like knew her stuff. And then she's like, well, this bottle's $20. Or you can go with the $130 bottle. And I was like, thank you. <laughs> like, and she was good. She was, yeah. And she said, she's like, well, it's a cocktail. So I assume you want this one. <laughs> I was like, yeah, thanks. Thank you. <laughs> it's, it, it's a thing, especially in, I think what, my dad was in Spain and he said that they drink sherry just on the rocks with an orange twist. And I, yeah. that's not, that doesn't happen here. Yeah. So. I locked one cat out and one cat in accidentally. There we go. Um, yeah, it was funny. I was just like wandering around and she was really good about like helping me, but then was giving me like all the different, like, here's this option or this one, right? Like your absinthe can cost you $70 or 300. <laughs> it's like 70. Thank you. <laughs> We're doing the cheapest of all these options. Yeah. Yeah. What? Why? How much would absinthe be for you? 40 to 50? Okay. That's equivalent to Canadian. Times. Okay, that's the, that's the exchange rate? <laughs> that's the exchange rate. Yeah. It was 1.3. I yeah. forgot that that's like... A Actually, 1.35 even. I know. It's... I, I know nothing about the Canadian exchange mm -hmm. rate. It's bad. Yeah. Really? Yes. I miss when yeah. it was par. Oh, my God. Those were the best. That was beautiful. Especially I live so close to the border. You just south of the border shopping was a big thing. Anyway, we digress. Let's go back to <laughs> like, the reason why we're here reason why we're here. So how did Fabled Spirits come to be? Just you guys being friends? Like, what, how did this work out? Yeah. So um, Danny and I, we worked in La Crosse, Wisconsin, and we were both bartenders, um, server bartenders. I'm, um, And we just, she was going to school for marketing. And I'm trying to, to be a published author. <laughs> yeah. And for published authors, it's just such, such a huge thing to have an online presence. And I was like, I don't even know really how, like I kind of can do it, but it's just a lot of work. And she's like, well, why don't we try and do something together? And then we found out that we both liked books. That was something that we never really talked about at work or after work hangouts because all of our other friends don't really like books. Um, but when we started hanging out with more, we were like, oh, we both like books. We're bartenders. What if we just combine the two? Yeah. And so, yeah, it's kind of what how it took place. And it's been a fun ride. That's awesome. I love that. Match mm -hmm. made in heaven there. No kidding. No kidding. So it was really cool, too, because I just got to finally share with somebody besides my sister and my husband about all these books that I liked. And mm -hmm. then she started reading, like, the ones I recommended, like Red White Rising and uh, A Court of Thorns and Roses. And it was just fun because we got to go through that all together. That's awesome. So the next question, how did you find Red Rising? Mm -hmm. So this is a super, it's kind of a funny story, but not really for me. So I got into Red Rising through my brother-in-law. So um, my husband's brother, his senior year of high school, I think, took a science fiction class with who was my favorite English teacher from high school. And that English teacher got an arc of Red Rising. Ooh. Um, and actually then got his whole class to read it. But with the arc, he had to give a review on Red Rising. Yep. And it was not the best review. Oh. I know. I was talking to him about, because I recently moved back to the area. And so he came in to visit me at my bar. And I was talking to him about this. He's like, yeah, it seems I didn't understand the assignment. Like, I really ripped this book up and down. I said it was, <laughs> he basically said it was just, a, another Hunger Games and that it oh. wasn't really original. I know. Mm. Blasphemous. I'm hearing this years later when I'm in love with the series and it's my most favorite <sighs> English teacher I've ever had. <sighs> but Not gonna anyway. lie, we don't like him. We don't like him already. <laughs> yep. He did admit that he took it way too seriously. You mm -hmm. know, as far as like, he said that if he could take it back, he would. Mm -hmm. um, but that was years ago. Um, when I first started reading them and it was a recommended read from my brother-in-law, uh, who doesn't read, 
and he actually liked the book. So it just goes to show that my English teacher maybe he didn't know what he was talking about. Yep. English teachers sometimes, I think, take things too seriously, as we say. Yeah. Like, yeah. just they, have fun they're, with They're things. reading into the blue curtains, and the curtains are actually just blue. Yeah. Right. Exactly. And so... I, Go I was going to say, I got to meet your brother-in-law and your husband in Chicago. Yes. So that one. Yes, exactly. Um, so it was really cool. I was so mad I couldn't be there. But I was glad that they were able to go. And I was glad that my brother-in-law was able to read one of the only authors he's ever really liked. That's awesome. So. Yeah. That's really cool. I love that. All right, who's your favorite uh, character and why is it Lysander? It's not Lysander. <laughs> that being said, I had really high hopes for him. Mm. And I think that my mind has been changed. Okay. So for me, for a long time, I just saw Lysander as Lysander and Darrow as two sides to the same coin. Yep. I just kind of really empathize with Lysander on the fact that he watched his whole family literally obliterated by this one guy who was trying to overtake everything he knew. Yeah. Like I felt a lot of compassion for him. Um, and that's kind of what happened to Darrow, you know, he, or Darrow, however people want to say it. Depends. Um, but that's what happened to him of like he saw his whole family die because of just these few people who ran the world yep. you know and so I just thought their journeys were very very similar um, and I thought their personalities to an extent were similar um, I can see that I think that yep. they definitely divul like diverted in the most recent book um and so you see a little bit more of Lysander come through. And that's what I really loved about um, Lightbringer. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I don't think I ever liked Lysander just because he was too whiny for me. Okay. Like I just didn't like his, and it's the same way I didn't like Lyria at the beginning because she was too whiny. Like, but then I can definitely see how, it makes sense of why he is. And especially like he's a 20 year old kid in right. iron gold, but then yeah, definitely we get to light bringer and we're like, ah, no, you're just dumb. You are you're just, just dumb. You're just stupid, yeah. man. See, I never got the whininess. I think, mm. well, that being said, I listened to it on audiobook. Mm. Um, the first, well, I listened to the whole, trilogy or write the whole series as of to this point on audiobook and so I did not like sorry if this is offensive to you voice actor but I didn't like the voice actor of Lysander right. um, for a couple different reasons mm -hmm. and so I think that the whininess that maybe you got if you read it I just took as that voice actor's perception of the character yeah. and maybe not exactly how it was supposed to be intended okay. um so that's the kind of thing when you're reading versus listening or even just of people's own perspective. I know that I read books and I told my sister, read this book. It's great. And then she gave it back to me and she's like, no, nope, this main character is too whiny. I cannot deal with this. And I'm like, really? I didn't. But she's also the older sister and I'm the younger sister. So maybe that's something to do with it too. <laughs> but I'm the younger sister. I'm the oh, ultimate so younger sister. Maybe you're more mature than I am. Yeah, like I'm usually the whiny one, and I found him whiny. <laughs> okay, you're like, that's a red flag. Yeah, yeah. Okay, who's your actual favorite character? My actual favorite character, this is really probably mainstream, but several. Oh, yeah, okay. He's just great. Um, I thought that it was, I thought his character was really refreshing. Because a lot of times you have a, a secondary character that's like the best friend to your, to your main character. And they do, to some extent, just follow you along, along like a little dog. And, you know, we kind of see Severo doing that from afar. But um, 
at the end of the day, he was still loyal. He still, he still stood his ground and he wasn't going to be pushed over. Sometimes those secondary best friend characters can be complete pushovers and all they're doing is just making the hero look more like a hero. Yep. And I think that Severo still did that, but in a very realistic way. Yeah, I get that. And I really appreciate Severo in the second like trilogy of having such more of a backbone. Of like, yeah, I'll still support you, oh, but yeah. and then at some point, not even of like, no, just right. send me home. Like, I'm I'm not doing this anymore. And that's right. where I really liked Savro. I mean, my favorite character is Victra, so I'm not going to say anything against Savro, but, <laughs> um, yeah, like I I appreciate well, Savro. I really liked how we saw Savro grieve in the first trilogy. Yeah, over and over again, and. Um, how he still kind of kept his head up. He still kept moving. And then he realized in the, you know, in the second, in the second trilogy, well, second series, that he has to work through that stuff. And that mm. he's not, you know, he has things that are more important now. He has a wife, he has a family. And he not only has to work through that stuff for him, but he has to do it for them. And that he has to make choices outside of himself. Oh. Yeah, for sure. All right, Crescent, so, you got a hot take. What is your favorite character? Or who is your favorite character? Mine's Darrow. Yeah. Speaking of mainstream. <laughs> I think all three of us are very yeah. mainstream. Like, I feel like the probably, obviously, top four who I your mean, favorite characters is Darrow, Severo, Victra, Mustang. Because they're great. They're the yeah. best. Victra took me by surprise. Mm. I think at first, and that's what I do like about her is at first you like who the whose side is she on? Like you yeah. didn't really know, but she was plain as day from the beginning. Yeah. It was really your own perception of who of you know who her family was um, that kept us in the way of that. For sure, and I don't know if she was really my favorite until uh, the end of Golden Sun, where she's crawling towards Daryl. With the, like, I didn't know. I didn't know. Like, and that yeah. pleading part was, that was the, like, oh, you are who you say you are. Right. <laughs> Victra, uh, oh, I cannot tell a lie, Julia. Like, she was, yeah. that was where she got me. Rather than, yeah, the beginning of Morning, or sorry, Golden Sun, where she's like, oh, I'm not wearing underwear. And all that. I'm like, who the <laughs> fuck are you what is right. this and then right. he like slowly grows on you and yeah and her trying to intermix with the howlers you're like you're an outsider don't try and be a howler and then it's like no 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 like you get that at the end of golden sun and then obviously during morning star she more than earns her cloak that mm -hmm. yeah For that's sure. where i really loved her also i just want to say uh i noticed you censor yourself you can swear on the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> All the fucking That's good time. To know. If I would have yeah. known that earlier, <laughs> I would have been swearing up a storm. I mean, oh god, we're out here getting fucked up. So <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to think. Uh, so because we're gonna do this split of pre versus after Lightbringer. What is your favorite book in the series before Lightbringer? And does Lightbringer take over your favorite or is your favorite still your favorite? Hmm. That's really hard. I think it would really have to be a tie between Dark Age and Golden Sun. Okay. And that's really surprising for me because when it comes to second books in the series, I don't like them usually. I think oh. that they're boring. They just set up for the third book. Yep. That is a lot of fluff. Um, but I think that um, in Golden Sun, it was really interesting to see. There was so much conflict between, uh, between Cassius and Darrow, and it was all great. Yeah. And, you know, I just loved that dynamic the whole time. And then in 
uh, ending that with basically a huge massacre is that the right word yeah um that just wasn't a really great ending and then dark age um it was a lot of, it was a lot of filler, but it always kept me interested you got to see a lot more of the world or the unit the, the solar system um and then the day of red of red doves just breaks your heart like you just can't even breathe yeah. after that for sure yeah, because so interesting because my favorite is Golden Sun and Crescent's is Dark Age. Dark Age. <laughs> oh my gosh, look, we're like besties. Ah, yeah. okay. So does Lightbringer trump that, or are you still sticking with those? Um, I really want to reread it. Okay, because I listened to it and I did kind of power through it quickly. Yep, there were some things that I really liked, and there were some things I just wanted more about. And I had more questions than answers. Um, that being said, I really miss, we started with the series with a whole bunch of characters, right? So we had, or at least a whole bunch of POVs. We had Darrow, we had Mustang a little bit. We yeah. had um, Ephraim, Lyria, and who am I missing? Oh, and Lysander. Lysander. <laughs> who? Okay. Who are we missing? Who are we missing? <laughs> And so it just started out so captivating in that way. And it was something different that um, we hadn't seen from Pierce before. And so then seeing him transition to just two POVs and with people that I thought at the very beginning of the story were two sides of the same coin, it just almost seemed a little flat to me. Okay. That being said, I really love Severo's internal struggle the whole way through. I yeah. loved seeing Cassius' <sighs> de- um, character arc. Yo. It was the best. It was the best character arc that I've seen in probably 90% of the books that I've read. Yeah. So I was not a Cassius fan. We know that. I refer to him as a dolphin, which is a boy that you have fun with on vacation and leave on vacation because you don't want them in your home. Uh, and... I messaged Crescent halfway through Lightbringer and was like, fuck, I don't think he's a dolphin anymore. (laughs) Because I was like, oh, (laughs) I want Cassius in my home now. (laughs) And then he was taken from us. But yeah, as you say, like, amazing character arc. Fantastic. Like, since you mentioned it first, um, his death, it made sense. But it also felt like it was way too soon. And I guess those are the best death. Like best death. Yeah. Best deaths <laughs> to Lord. Like that's what we got for EO. You know, that's what we got for so many people throughout the Red Rising series. And it's like you're finally just starting to love Cassius. And you're like Pierce did such a good job with the nostalgia. Yes. Like, being like, oh, remember when they were in the Institute? Remember when they were best friends? And now they're healing. And now they're great. But I knew when Darrow and um, Cassius had their last talk, I was like, he's fucking dead now. Like I It was mean- it was at Lauren's for me. The moment he went to Lauren's, I got a message Crescent. And the thing is, so Crescent read it a month before me. He was not allowed to answer back to anything I said. That was the rule. And so <laughs> Crescent just got a text of like, oh, look at the nostalgia for like Lauren's house. Oh, shit. Cassius is dead. It's like, yeah, I was like... <laughs> But, like, him and Lyria were such a, like, you finally saw that peer, like, oh, and, like, I know it's hit or miss on people whether or not they think that's romantic or just friendly, but, like, oh, it's so, it was so good. Well, I think it's just, like, it's a normal guy-girl friendship, I think. We see that all the time within friendships of guy-girls. It's this friendly bantering and flirting that isn't necessarily sexual. I think that it was a very good way of viewing Cassius's development because yeah. before he was a gold, he didn't care about these people. He didn't care about reds. He didn't care about pinks. And then all of a sudden he's able to develop bonds and feelings for them. That's it. That was incredible. Yeah, for sure. Uh, yeah. I just oh, absolutely loved them together. I was like, damn it. <laughs> like, which I, it was really interesting, actually, in 
Chicago at Pierce talked about it and then screwed up how he was talking about it and gave giant spoilers uh, because he was trying to just say about the two of them were not really in- going to interact. But while he was writing it, he had them t- those two of them standing in the hallway of the Archimedes and we got hit this point where he just looked at like who was in the room and was like, oh, shit these characters are going to love each other. (laughs) Like, they are going to get along so well. But he was trying to hide it in Chicago. And he, so he was like, oh, Cassius. And and, and then he's like, what code word am I going to use? Eaglet. So he's using that. And then halfway through, accidentally says Lyria. And you just hear the whole audience go, oh, shit. (laughs) Like, it was so Damn. funny. And he, in the moment, was like, oh, I tried so hard. I tried so hard to not ruin who it was. I but can, yeah. Yeah. It must be so hard to, for him to talk about That's it, though. The crazy like, thing about doing a book yeah. tour right after your book releases. Like, obviously, you want to maintain that momentum, and you want to get out and see your, you know, your fans and sell your book. But then yeah. you have to talk about your book. Yeah. Without everything. Like, how the fuck are you supposed to do yeah. that? Yeah. Well, it is, so I saw him, what, three times this tour. And it was interesting that Chicago, he just did audience Q&A. It was him on the stage and audience Q&A, and that was it. Rather than Toronto, they brought somebody in to do the Q&A. And I got to work the Toronto event. So I was talking to AJ Fries, who interviewed him. And I was talking to him ahead of time. And I was like, so have you finished Lightbringer? And he's like, no, I purposely didn't. So that all of my questions were not leading. Oh, so he'd only read to Dark Age so that he could ask questions based more broad and not accidentally slip in a spoiler. So Toronto, he only he accidentally spoiled something from Dark Age, which I'm like, if you're at the signing, you should have read Dark Age. But Chicago Pierce accidentally ruined (laughs) something from Lightbringer. Yeah. And I think he yelled that at somebody because someone went, oh, my God. And he's like, oh, get over it. Like, it's been four years. He ruined Eph- Ephraim's death is what it was. He spoiled Ephraim's death in mm-hmm. Toronto. Oh, let's talk about deaths that scarred you for life. Gosh, when Ephraim died, yeah. I just Oh, I know. You know. I mean. But can, can we just say how uh, how much comeuppance Ba got? Oh, my God. For that? Ooh. That is a that is an absolute clangor of a couple chapters. Oh my god! I, I freaked out. So I was not in any of the Lightbringer chats until that moment. Until what is it? Chapter 70? 77? What what yeah. chapter? Seventy three. Yeah. Seventy and, well, seventy two through seventy four. Right, and then I had to enter the chats in the Discord and be like, "Oh my fucking god!" Yeah. But yeah, how did we get you into the den? What how did what what caused you okay. to join us? So a couple things. One was I remember somebody mentioning the Discord um, at the Bacchanal. Mm, yeah, that's what got me in. Um, yes, and I think that's when that's when Tender joined, but oh. then he never talked to anybody after that day. Or he got overwhelmed by the chaos of yeah. that day. Yeah. Um, and then I joined sometime after the gala. And I was like, it was pretty much like a fuck it moment. I'm just going to do it. You know, kind of a thing. And so then I did. And then I just started talking. And it was good. Yeah. Um, I don't know. So my husband and I, we moved back to the area we grew up a couple of years ago. And, um, my previous job, I was a manager at a restaurant. And so you couldn't actually like really be friends with anybody because you're everybody's boss. Right. And so then I switched to a bartending gig, but, um, I'm like the bar, I'm like the only bartender. I'm a bartender slash bar manager. I, somebody else owns it, but I pretty much run it kind of a deal. And so I don't work with anybody else. And so a den, the den was like a really nice way to come in and just freaking talk to people and have friends and people that like 
check up on you because ever since I moved back to this area, I haven't really found a good place to fit in. Yeah, I love that. We'll always be here for you. Other than when you sass me yeah. so much. <laughs> you like it and you then know. I'll be there for you. <laughs> <laughs> Someone will be there for me. It's fine. I'll just keep granting you wishes. I told you, know. you that my three wishes were up, and you're like, I guess I can make an exception. <laughs> I'm a, so I'm I know a pushover. A little bit. It's fine. Uh, for those who don't know, because of you... We now have in the den special designation to who you named the Legend Legion. The Legend so it Legion? is the people who are known in the Red Rising fandom for, like yourself, content creator, the podcasts, um, Orange Armory, uh, PB Doodles. Yeah. Um, oh, and. Iron or uh, Jenna Sharp. Yep, yeah. Jenna Sharp. Uh, Red Prince Rising. I'm trying to think. There's yeah, so many now. Basically, we're the the idea behind it is to kind of give people uh, just an at a glance, like these are people that are vetted. They're they're verified, trusted people in the community. Yeah. Um. Just so it's this person is safe by every every measure that we have taken so far. Right, right. Yeah. And I think it's been a little quiet in there, you know, to start with. I think it'll be fun once we... S There's still so many of the content creators that I haven't gotten to know personally yet yeah. in in the Discord. And so... Well, it, and it's interesting of, like, I think some people just don't understand Discord. Like, we love Howler Pod, and they are both in there... But Aaron has to message me of, like, what is happening? I don't understand. <laughs> like, it's okay. I'll guide you through. I'll guide you through. <laughs> like, it's a big learning curve. And it, I tell yeah. people this all the time. The first day that I was really in there and talking with people, I felt like I was on a ship that would not stop swaying. Like, I felt motion sickness. And because you're just, like, there's so many things going on and so many things popping up. And your eyes are doing, like, this. And you don't know what to focus on. And then after a couple of days, you get your sea legs and yeah. you're like, okay, I kind of, I kind of understand how this is working now. Yeah. I like that. Good analogy. I appreciate that analogy. I thought you would. Ah, it's me. I'll, always running the ship. But yeah, that was, that was a funny day of like, well, and it became because one of our mods, Hydro, somebody would say something and she's like, is, is this someone I can listen to? Is this somebody that people are like, I'll talk to Joel does this person actually have sway to talk to Joel? Like, what's happening? And then we were like, okay, let's call out. And then you were like, the Legend Legion. <laughs> and I was like, oh, oh that's good. I started because you put the, the symbols by everyone's name, yes. right? For like, if you were in a podcast or if you, you know, were related in, in some way to being a content creator for Red Rising. And that helps, but like, I just wanted the Legend Legion so I could know, like, you know, okay, who's Gambit? Oh, yes, this is like, there's this thing who he is, and this is how it all works out. And then in the Legend Legion, then we can talk about secret collaborations and stuff like yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, I'm excited. Excited for that. We shall see what comes um, comes about of it. Does, I hope it does good things, but I did make quite a quite a few requests on that one day. I just, the one I day. The power of the moon. Yeah. There was something else you wanted, though, that was not related to Legend Legion, and I was like, oh, fine. It was the Lost We Den. <laughs> oh, the Lost We Den, you're right, because... And that yeah. has been used a lot yes. uh, by me. So, thank you. Yep. Oh, and by me, and and Gambit, who is cross from Words and Whiskey. The three of us are just always in there. I mean, it makes sense. Uh, so, the Lost We Den, and I didn't know this. So tell us how, how you named the Lost We Den. So that's where we post all of our drink content. Yeah, so in the den, there is... Everything is purposely named. And I, again, do not ever name anything. But in that moment, normally it's taken back to Pegasus Legion. What are we going to give something? And we were trying to find that space, and I knew it needed to be immediate. So it's like the first thing in the den I've named. And it was this pressure that I was like, okay, hold on. What's the tavern? And Golden Sun is called the Lost Weed End. 
And then you were like, why is the Wii lost? And it was Gambit who explained, like, no, it's it's Joss Whedon. <laughs> I was like, oh, it took me like two days also to be like, I still don't understand how this is a Firefly reference. I still don't get it. And it was like later I said it up out loud and I was like, oh, it's Joss Whedon. Yep. So it's the lost Whedon. Yeah, okay. Gosh. Yeah, yeah, yes. he, I he mentioned from the Bacchanal that he had so many little, what do you call? I don't know, little tidbits of different pop cultural references. Yeah, that he, thank you. That he left throughout his books, and I'd like to really pick his brain on all. Like, I want to know them all. Like, I want him to release a special edition, and all those Easter eggs are just highlighted. Highlighted. I know. Yeah, I little little asterisks. Yeah. I actually have, I did one of my read-throughs, this is way back, back before the den ever was, well, it was before Iron Gold, so, and I read through the original trilogy and f- posted on Reddit every Easter egg I could find, and people added in what they could find, and I'm sure it's half of what's actually there. Right. And that was me, like, I googled every single line of the book. Like, I just sat there and went that's weird wording google like that's weird wording google <laughs> you're I, oh, yeah it oh, is yeah. intense I had a thought recently oh while darrow is talking to quicksilver is quicksilver kingpin Who? oh from kingpin. from uh, um yeah well, um, marvel but daredevil because he's he's described well, so this it was during the the conversation in Morningstar. He's described as having like big butcher fingers, like he's just meaty, and you know he's a titan of industry, and he's bald, and he's always wearing a suit. Is he kingpin? <laughs> Interesting. Because in so my Pierce, mind, Quicks- is that a reference? Is that a reference, Pierce? Uh, in my mind, Quicksilver was always very thin. I don't know why. Oh yeah, no. It's it specifically talks about how like his uh, like his fingers are just thick. Interesting. Yeah. All right. They, uh... Heard it here first. I'll, I'll look That's up the quote here. Interesting. Huh. But Quick Story is Quick Silver's backstory. <sighs> yeah. So this is the the description of Quicksilver. He's bald, forehead wrinkled as a washboard, pugilist lips. Pugilist lips. That's hard words to say. Hunched simian shoulders leading to butcher fingers that sprout from the sleeves of a high-collared Venusian turquoise robe embroidered with apple trees. He's in his 60s, skin bronzed with a marrow deep tan. A small goatee and mustache accent his face in a vain attempt to give it shape, though it seems he's stayed away from carvers for the most part. Hmm. Interesting. So, so Pierce, let me... is that a reference? Is that a reference, Pierce? Is that a reference? Is that one of the ones that hasn't been caught yet? You I've should never message seen anybody him. say it. Message him and I'm see. Actually going to do, I'm going to do that right now. Right now. Um, right. But yeah, you had mentioned his backstory and like, oh my God, that was heartbreaking to read that. Just... I guess I never picked up on the eyeball ring. No, me, other neither. Even though then I reread and I was like, oh. It's definitely mentioned, yeah. Yeah. Like, I just never really. Yeah. So that was, that was a really cool thing. It was, it really tied into why, not really why him and Mateo together, but. But it made sense then. Yeah. Um, so it was just, it gave you a lot more th- to think about with Quicksilver as well. And a lot more 
it did offer a, a really good reason of why he couldn't really help Daryl the way that Daryl wanted to be helped. Yes. Which Wish still I, sucked. Yeah, but I think people had issue with Quicksilver not, he's not necessarily a villain, but you don't, like, he sways so much that that yeah. backstory then gave reason of why he's so in the middle, that he's not 100% Sons of Aries, and he's not, like, he, he just sways so much, and you get why in that moment. Right, right. Yeah, it just, it was also weird how he had this dream of his before Fitchner even found him, or before Fitchner and him really allied mm -hmm. together. Yeah, um, and so that just makes you wonder of like how many colors or high ranking colors have had gone through this, or something yeah. similar, or had tried. You know. Yep. Yeah, for sure. I don't know. Yeah, I really like the hearing of the backgrounds previous to every, and like I know we want so much. Yeah from Pierce of like, can we have, which we probably never will, which is why fan fiction exists, but it adds so much detail when we can get it. Right. And it's enough information for us to fill in the gaps. Like you can kind of create your own little fan fiction in your mind of everything that Silver went through. Yeah. Um, that being said, I was talking to somebody in the den how I wish Holiday would have her own spinoff. I series. saw that. Yes, I you agree. Know. Because that would be amazing. On. She's a bad bitch. And I, especially after getting a glimpse of Ephraim, you're like, okay, but why didn't I get a glimpse of Holiday? Like, I want to know her. She's obviously been through a lot of loss. So how is she still on this path how is she still making these decisions to stick by mustang yeah i will say that the my one thing that um upsets me is and it, it was interesting of having read lightbringer before everybody else and all these people being like oh the person who sold out daryl is clearly holiday and I was like, screw you. Like, no. Do not say anything against my girl. Like, yeah, she doesn't back Daryl, but she is 100% there for Mustang. Right. She at all times has Mustang 6. Like, she is there. And all these people who are like, oh, but who would do this? Gotta be Holiday. Who would sell him out? Gotta be Holiday. And it's like, no. No. Do not yeah. do that to my girl. I agree. Fuck them bitches. Fuck them yep. bitches. Yeah. Uh, yeah. What do you think... What do you think is to be expected, or what do you think the next book's gonna bring? Oh. I... I am not this person who theorizes. I purposely stay out of Red God theories. Uh... I would assume that the Republic wins out or else we've done seven books for no reason. Or uh, nothing. But how that goes down, I don't know. I, again, I don't theorize, but I would assume that the Republic at least wins in some capacity, even if that's just like Pax and Electra taking over. But I don't know. Why? What do you think? Do you think they're like going to be an item? No, I don't think they're going to be an item. I think that's weird, and they're, like, basically brother-sister. But I yeah, think that... I think it, it's basically going to be a, a darrow Severo relationship. Exactly. Or a, or a darrow victra relationship. Yeah. I agree to disagree. Ooh. But I, I, I don't know. I ship all those. I'm a, I'm a sucker for, like, friends to lovers. And everyone hates me for it. And but so not Cassius and Lyria? No, I just don't think, I don't think so. I don't know. I think Cassius's one true love was still yet to be found. I'm glad that in, in his last few weeks, he was able to find solace with somebody. Yeah. Cassius's one true love was actually Daryl. 
Ooh. That's true. Ooh. Hot take. I like it. The lightning and the thunder. Yeah. Yep. All right, but back to what do you think is happening in Red God? I want to hear Crescent first. Oof. Uh, Darrow is going to give Lysander his full attention. And he'll Ooh. do well the last seven seconds. Get. I think that, I think Darrow's definitely done with the whole Mercy thing. When it comes oh, yeah. to Lysander. Mercy no longer exists to the river. Right. Ruler. He's like, I've given this not when bitch... it comes to Lysander. Yeah. Yeah, he's like, I've given this bitch too many chances. Like, it's Aaron Burr and Alexander Hamilton now. Like, it's just yeah. all out. And I think fair. Here's an itemized list of 13 of years of disagreements. Of disagreements. <laughs> we need to... <laughs> We need to make that a meme or something. Oh, God. Yep. Yep. So, but I agree with you, Skip. I'm not really a person who likes to think about that stuff. Like, my husband, he's constantly, we're watching a movie, we're reading a book, and he's like, oh, what do you think's going to happen? I think this is going to happen. I think this is going to happen. And I just like to be surprised. Yep. And that is part of, and I hate that about myself because I do write books and I'm like, oh, I'd be a better writer if I would think about this stuff while I'm reading. But I'm just in it for the lols, man. Like, yeah. <laughs> I, just, I don't want to spoil anything for me. I don't want any expectations. I just want to see where the ride takes me. Well, this is it. Like, so I only learned about people being scared that Severo had been, uh, as Hell or Pod calls it, brain diddled. I only discovered that once people were bra like reading Lightbringer and they're like, oh, I didn't trust Severo the whole time. Meanwhile, I was like fully on Severo's side the whole time and I won out. I'm just saying. But that the people are like, no, 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 you can't. No. Severo has been fucked with. And I'm like, no, I, I trust our boy. I trust yeah. our boy. Uh, Severo literally talks about it in Lightbringer. He's like, uh, the abomination said he was going to take, basically take everything from me. That's one thing that I was upset about with this book. We did not get enough about the abomination. Mm, that because he's like barely in it. He's like he's a source. He's barely in it, and I just wanted more. I just wanted mm -hmm. more about that. And like I understand, it wasn't the right time. I, I think. Feel like I think I the finished. abomination will be the final boss in uh, Red God. Like, like Sanders so, just a pit stop. Well, because you've yeah, got Atalantia, so. who's way more of a badass than Lysander. Yeah. And you have the abomination. Never mind Atlas. Like, what no, is Lysander? They Atlas. killed Atlas. Oh, fuck yeah, he did. Cassius, Cassius had Atlas. him with. Cassius had him with a fucking uh, razor noose, and then Lysander shot the top of his head off. Okay, listen, I'm not done my second read through. Uh, okay, oh. fine. So Here Atlantia, Atlantia, and the Abomination, I think, trump Lysander. Yeah. So in chapter eleven, think... uh, Severo says, "I don't know where Pebble and Clown are. I don't know if Lilith and the Abomination still have them." He said he was going to erase me. Uh, oh. oh, no, no, no. Highlight. There See, I still, I don't know. Uh, wash out my memories. Turn me into his trained dog. Wash out my family. And then he says he didn't, though. I don't know why. I bet. And I've seen people, I've seen people theorizing that uh, must, uh, the abomination is Mustang's contact. Oh, for sure. I believe it's that. I believe implied, that. Heavily implied. And I'm wondering if the abomination gave Severo back as a, you know, please don't hate me. Yeah. Or some sort of like plea deal thing. You yeah. know, yeah. I, but I would not be surprised then if Pebble and Clown came back and they were all 
brain fucked his brain or used as as weapons or something. Yeah. Um, they've got kids, man. Yeah, that we don't really know much about. No, we know nothing Anything about. Anything about. We know they exist. We know they, they are in the solar system. Correct. So. Yep. All right. Uh, I'm going to move us on from Red God theories just because I don't like them. Mm-hmm. Um, are, are we good? We got any other questions? What are we feeling? I'm down for whatever. I don't really have any other questions. Yeah. All right. I think, I think we've kind of covered it all. Yeah. I love this. Twist, you have to come on just a episode where we talk yeah, like random. Real episode. Real. This is a real episode, but yeah, hopefully. come hopefully. October when we're doing. Like, should I be offended? No, no, no. Like, like what do we have to actually like a, talk like a, about? An like, actual red book discussion episode. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, October is when we are going to start our light bringer episodes. Um, but yeah, thank you so much for this. This is amazing. Thank you guys. This yes. is fantastic. Yeah, like that you like the Lysander. It was delicious. Yeah, I, yeah. Think, I think the next time I make it, I will not make it with eight dashes of bitters. <laughs> it wasn't it's bad. Go. I enjoyed all the bitters. I need simple syrup. Oops. My bad. So, and maybe I real would... lime or lemon. <laughs> Oops. Uh, my bad. You have real lemon. It is called real lemon. Don't get it. It's not. Gosh darn it. Give, gonna give me a heart attack. Um, but yeah, I'm excited for you guys to see Volga's cocktail. That'll be coming out soon this week. Yes. Oh yeah. Oh my God. Do I have to go to the United States to get snowballs? (laughs) Yes. Okay. And apparently, so I had never seen zombie land. Oh yeah. Oh really? Yeah. yeah. (laughs) Really. And so I was telling people about this cocktail that I was making because it's, Volga's cocktail is based off of a snowball, but the host of snowballs. And um, then I was telling somebody at work, like a customer about it. And they're like, well, we have you watched Zom- like that part from Zombieland? And I'm like, what the fuck is that? And so they showed me the little clip and now I have to watch Zombieland because. It's not the taste. It's the texture. Yeah, it's the consistency. It's That's the consistency. what it is. That's what it is. Because he's looking for Twinkies. <laughs> I love it. Yep. And that's the whole premise of the movie. Him looking okay. for a Twinkie. That's what they told me. Listen, that's so what's going to happen is I have to make a pit stop in the United States uh, a week before I see Crescent. So I will get us snowballs. I will bring them to Saskatchewan. And we may or may not make the cocktail. It's a tough cocktail. So you said it involves clarified milk? It involves, it in, yes. So it's a, called a clarified milk punch. So basically you use milk and you curdle it to clarify the cocktail. This so sounds like a crescent problem. I'm just bringing snowballs from the United States. Okay. <laughs> so, but I also needed, I had to use, at work I had citric acid because I couldn't, actually add lemon juice or lime juice or orange juice or pineapple juice to curdle the milk because it would alter the flavor. So I had to use just a couple kernels of citric acid in order to curdle the milk. And that's what clarifies the cocktail because the casein in the milk, when it's curdled, it attracts polyphenols and all the extra like impurities in the cocktail. And so it filters all those out. So you just get like a clear, Liquid. You have lost me on all these words. I got you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. He's going to make the cocktail. I will bring the snowballs. That's how this will work. Uh, I'm, I'm, certain, I'm certain I can get a hold of citric acid. Yeah. Also, I got snowballs on Amazon. Yeah, but they have to come across the border for us. Amazon? Or the snowballs? Snowballs. Both. They're, they don't exist in Canada. 
Well, yeah, you could still order them on Amazon. We will try. Okay. Thank you very much, Twist, for coming Thank today. You. Thank you for everyone for listening. Uh, we will do this again soon because great. this is fantastic. I love this. This yep. is great. This is fun. Yeah, I can always give me a reason to expand my bar. Yeah. It'll just take like a paycheck or two. Yeah, seriously. For real. All right. Thank you, everybody. Bye. Bye.